Welcome to the Solicam University channel. This video's topic is individual control over copied parts. Um, so what we're going to cover in this video is the idea that you can use coordinate system transform or Mac to Mac transform uh, to copy your tool paths from one coordinate system to another and then that gives you the individual control over those individual parts. And we've covered something similar to this, actually probably exactly this, in the Tombstone video, the basics of Tombstone video on the same YouTube channel. Uh, but what I want to show you here is when the part is on the same table. So essentially what you're trying to do here is you're trying to copy the tool paths from your part one to your other four parts here, other three parts, uh, but they're on the same plane meaning that the X direction is in the same direction for all four parts. And how that can come into uh, an issue when you're using coordinate system transform is when you're doing a part that is flipped. In this case, this one's rotated 180. Uh, but I, in this coordinate system, I need the X to be in the same direction or else this doesn't make any sense, right? So when you're doing a coordinate system transform, all you really need to do is have your coordinate system in the same relative direction from the copied parts. That's why they're all top center, and that's why all the x axes are going in this direction. Let's say in the direction of the smaller flange compared to the larger flange. Now, on this part, this coordinate system should be facing that way if I'm going to do any kind of coordinate system transform. But since it's on the same plane, I can't actually do that because it's just going to output to being in the same direction anyway. So, how do I account for a mirrored part like that, or in this case, a, uh, a rotated part? Well, I can still use the coordinate system transform. So let me just show you what I have so far. I have these two tool paths, a profile and a pocket on part one. And I want to copy that to the similar parts under Mac 2 and Mac 3. So what I've done is I've created the transform, basically, for a coordinate system transform. And I selected Mac 2 and Mac 3. And that's what that one there represents. When I show these ones here, I've actually transformed it to Mac 2 and Mac 3. Now, in this transformation, if we just take a look at that again, um, I actually use the option that says uh, new operation at the end of the operations tree. So that gives me the individual control even in the software. In the G code, this will be output under all the individual Macs, all the individual offsets. But in the software, if I wanted to actually do a transformation of this one only to Mac 2 or only to Mac 3, then I just have to check them in the box there. In this case, just for the purpose of the video, I've checked both because they're all the same, so why not? And I've actually could have also done it in one operation where with one tool path, I could do all three. So I have the ability to do that as well. The purpose of this video is to show what to do with this fourth one, the one that's the, the oddball out, the one that has been rotated 180. Um, you can use this for any rotation. You can use this for any uh, change of position at all, as long as the coordinate system is in the same direction. Obviously, it has to be in the same direction if it's on the same table. But if you know how this was changed, it's been flipped, it's been mirrored, whatever it is, as long as you put it under that coordinate system, then you have the additional transforms available to you. And that's what this one's doing right here. This one is a uh, two transformations in one window. I've done the transformation from Mac 1 to Mac 4, and then I've done a rotation of 180. And I've done that like this. Let me actually recreate it for you. So the operations under Mac 1, let's call that the master operations, the one we want to copy. We'll go to transform. I'll put it at the end of the operations tree. So instead of putting it right after or making it part of that same toolpath, I'll put it at the very end of the operations tree. And then I'm going to go to coordinate system transform. I'm going to tell it to take the operations from Mac 1 and copy them to Mac 2. So you can see that's already happening there. Now if I did that, what you'll see is we get these operations down here. But obviously they are for a similar part. So I need to flip those guys around. So what I'm going to do is just highlight just these ones, right-click, transform, and what I'll do is I'm actually going to right-click on my current transformation there, and I'm going to say just add on top of that a rotate. So I'll go rotate, delta, and I just want to rotate the same part that's already there, or at least the same operations that are there, 180. So I'm just going to say a rotation of one. I'm literally just going to take what's there and flip it. So we'll say 180. Since my corner system is top dead center, and I know my z-axis is the top dead center, I can just do a rotation around the z-axis. Otherwise, I'd have to go and play with these options here. I'll just click OK. And now I have um, 
on top of the, the coordinate system transform a rotation. So it's going to do both of those. So what you get there is you get this little X indicating that it's more than just one type of transformation. And you can see that more than one type of transformation is basically a rotation as well as that coordinate system transform. So you can use this for the majority of the toolpaths inside SolidCam. And this gives you the ability to program just one instance of the part and then just use copies and rotations and whatever else you need to continue machining your parts all from just one part file. Any questions of this or anything else from Solcam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.